according to Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports, it is expected that Isaiah Hartenstein uh, is, is going to stay with the Knicks. And that the Knicks have contacted teams, opposing teams, about Mitchell Robinson. Now, a couple of things that may have impacted the iHeart News. You had OKC making a big splash yesterday. Blockbuster trade, if you will, for one Alex Caruso. Caruso, that was one of my trade targets if you watched episode one of Offseason Central. OKC goes in and gets Caruso. He's going to be eligible for a four-year, $78 million deal. So now there's questions as to, is OKC going to still, they still have money to spend. Are they going to use that on iHeart or go a little bit cheaper? According to Jake Fisher in his article, he say he thinks that uh, OKC will go the cheaper route, go situational reserve big man to support Chad Holmgren, rather than making a bigger splash to go get iHeart and potentially change their offense up a little bit. I don't think it would be that big of a deal, but the thinking here is that OKC will go a little bit cheaper. So that takes one, to me, formidable, formidable team out of the iHeart sweepstakes potentially because the thing is this. iHeart will most likely get the security, the longer-term security with the Knicks in a four-year deal. Do the Thunder go out there and try to give them a balloon deal, which is like... 25 on a one plus one Bobby Marks came on this show and talked about in two years OKC is going to have to make this contract decisions on key players so they're not really looking to get into bed with any players for on on under long-term deals that could potentially hamper them from a salary cap standpoint going down the road so would they offer iHeart you know a balloon deal at 25 one plus one and does he take that over the longer term security and being in a place where he's comfortable, has chemistry with the team, so on and so forth? I think he'll go with the latter. I do think that the Knicks will retain Isaiah Hartenstein and that number will be announced at some point in the coming weeks. Now, let's go to the second part of his article here. And that is that the Knicks have a contacted opposing teams about moving Mitchell Robinson. Let's highlight that, man. Let's get that in there. So to everybody in the chat, off-season central, we're doing research here. They contacted other teams about Mitch. And what do we talk about on this show? If the Knicks, in my opinion, if the Knicks are to retain Hartenstein, keeping both iHeart and Mitch, when you have to make significant investments, we're hearing OG could be getting anywhere between 35 and 40. You got iHeart if you're going to keep him. A second apron looming. Mitch could be a casualty for a couple of reasons. Number one, just as I said, financially, it may not make the most sense to allocate so much resources into your big man front court. And number two, there's only but so many trade assets that the Knicks have. You're not trading the Nova 3. You're not, you're not Julius long shot and not necessary at this point. So you have the Bogdanovich contract, you have Mitch, and you maybe have Deuce along with draft picks. Those are your most tradable assets right now. So those are the most tradable assets. So none of this is even remotely surprising, to be completely honest with you. I'm not surprised at, at any of this news. And shout out to our guy Ian Begley because he's reporting that he's heard similar to the Yahoo report by Jake Fisher on Mitchell Robinson. He says, New York in talks about potential trades. Robinson's name has come up. Don't think New York is fully committed to moving him, but his salary, which is two years left on a four-year, $60 million descending contract, is valuable. I, I also think that He'd also be a valuable player just based on his potential defensively when he is healthy. So you have the Bogdanovich contract, you have the Mitch contract. You might have to use that to make one big move this summer. A lot of you guys don't want to trade Mitch. I'm, I'm not, you know, pushing Mitch out the door by any stretch. Like, Mitch, you, you're a guy. 
But this is a tough business, man. I got I got my Mitch uh, Block Nest Monster T. I should drop the re-release these, man. I should put those back out. But um, it's just the cost of doing business. Everybody's not coming along for the ride, so Mitch could be a casualty here. Let me know what you guys think, man. Six five seven three eight three one five zero nine, or you could hit me up on the KFTV Discord. So none of this news is is surprising at all. Now, let's say, let's say. They do keep iHeart and potentially trade Mitch. Remember a guy that I had on my potential iHeart replacement list on, to, on the centers that are available. I mentioned Orlando big man Goga Biktaze. Now, according to Evan Sidery, covers the league for Forbes magazine, Forbes Sports. Goga Bataze, number 18 pick from the 2019 draft, is a player many contending teams are targeting as a backup big option on the vet minimum market. Clippers, Heat, Kings, Knicks, Mavs, Pelicans, Suns are teams expected to show interest. Five points, four rebounds. Uh, the numbers aren't even don't even aren't even worth going through. He's a, he's a backup. He's a backup big. He can defend. He can rebound. Is that a potential cheaper option to back up iHeart? Plus, you still got Sims and a potential, you know, whatever they do in the draft. Maybe they do something in the draft to get some more depth there. Could be potential options here. Just just don't shoot the message. I'm just the conductor here. We're just sifting through the news, and we are reacting to it. This is more of a rumor here, and we're reacting to it. Maybe keep an eye heart. Maybe trade in Mitch. Interest in Gogot Bataze. Let me know your thoughts. 657-383-1509. Or you can hit me up on the KFTV Discord. My franchise channel members, salute to you guys. On a Friday, hot day outside in New York, at least close to 90. Might be a little over 90 in the city. So make sure you guys are taking care of yourself. Make sure you're applying that deodorant. So support our sponsors at Mando. Man, go to Mando. Shopmando.com. Use our code KFTV. $5 off the starter pack. Swavy says it would break my heart if Mitch gets traded. Yeah, man. It'd be tough. It would definitely be tough to lose Mitch. He's an elder statesman. He's contributed to the culture here. I liked how he's come along. You know, a lot of you guys wanted, expected more out of him, especially offensively. I thought he was fine. The injuries were were really the only thing that uh, are really the only thing that that's really keeping him back. But hey, this this business is going to be tough. It's going to be tough call on who to keep. GQ fight out super chest says it would be a tragedy, travesty to watch iHeart get pushed around by Embiid after paying him all that money. I mean, look, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who Joel Embiid can't push around. You'd be hard-pressed to find that. It's Joel Embiid at the end of the day, right? That There's no lockdown defender in the league. Some guys are going to do better against others based on the matchup. The Embiid matchup was not the best for iHeart. He struggled in that series. No question. I'll be the first one to tell you. But I, I that doesn't mean that just because he couldn't check Embiid doesn't mean that he didn't do 100 great things for the Knicks throughout last season because I thought he was fantastic. Between the floater, the two-man game with Brunson, he was durable for the most part. The rebounding, the defense, I heard was a great player for the Knicks. I thought he was great for the Knicks. <laughs>